How you doing, everybody? This is the Dirt Bike Channel Podcast. I'm your host, Kyle Brotherson, and today we're going to be talking about kids' bikes. So I get a lot of dads that email me all the time, hit me up on social media, whatever, text me. Most of it is over email and social media saying, hey, like, I got some questions about bikes. I mean, I even had these questions. I had at least one of these questions today in my email alone. And they're just like, you know, it kind of runs the gamut of, hey, what bike do you suggest for my kid? What bike do you suggest for um, my wife? What bike do you suggest for me? But I get a lot of these questions about what bike do you suggest for my kid? My kid is 10, my kid is 12. And it's really, really hard for me to recommend bikes to people. Um, in fact, it's hard for me to recommend bikes to anybody at any level when I haven't met you, when I haven't met the people. And it's really tough for me to recommend bikes for kids because what I've noticed, I've got four kids. Three of them have been riding bikes. My oldest is my my oldest is uh, Kaylee. She's 15. Um, and then I've got Connor, who's 12. Uh, he's my son. Then there's Case, my son, who's 10. And then I've got a daughter, Kenzie, and she is three. Um, and the older kids have all like the th- one of the things that makes it difficult to recommend bikes for kids is how different every kid is, and it's just really really staggering when you start to think about it. You guys, uh, with fathers, uh, uh, you fathers out there know what I'm talking about. Each one of your kids are so very different that it's very very difficult for you to even know how to parent them. You can't use the same parenting techniques with all the kids. They're all so everyone is so different. And so it can be very difficult to kind of know how to recommend bikes for people because everyone is doing different things. Some fathers have their sons out there doing motocross. Other fathers have their sons doing, you know, trail riding. Other fathers are just having their kids ride around some, I don't know, some wide open field out there. And everyone's got different, different um, needs. And every kid has a little bit different personality. So rather than uh, do a pos- podcast telling you, okay, this is this is what I think you should buy for your kid. I'm just going to go through kind of the saga of bikes that we've had right now. So as of this, the, the, the bikes that I could remember as I sat down and wrote some notes, I came up with 10 bikes, nine, um, nine gas powered bikes and one electric bike that the kids have that the kids had. And I won't do the, uh, there, and there probably are some electric bikes out there that are really good. Um, and more and more of them are coming. I know that KTM has some KTM Husky and there's some different ones out there. We had a really, really cheap um, beginner level little electric dirt bike. It was the Razor electric bike. I can't remember which one it was. I'm not going to talk about it a ton because I didn't like it. It didn't have enough power. It didn't work well in the sand or the dirt. The battery didn't have enough life and it took too long to charge. And so the one we had basically didn't work. It was fun for, you know, like a toddler or so. <laughs> not a toddler, but just it was it was. Some parents have found some value in electric bikes for their kids. I wasn't one of those parents, and maybe I just had the wrong equipment. But the first bike that we really started out with, and that I highly, highly recommend um, for any of those dads out there, um, was a Honda CRF 50F. Now, we ended up with two of these bikes. We had an older one, and we had a newer one. Uh, These bikes haven't changed really any since, I don't know, 15, 20 years. So if you go out there and you're looking for a Honda CRF 50 F, it really doesn't matter if you get a 2020, a 2021, or like a 2008, the bikes are all the same. They, they change the plastic, the, the, the stickers on them just a little bit, but essentially it's the same bike forever has been the same bike forever. And we ended up having two of those and it worked really well. You could also get that same bike, uh, the bike that it would be very, very similar in a Yamaha, um, TTR 50, um, and that would be fine. But we ended up with the C, the Honda CRF 50s. Very, very good bikes. And another thing I want to mention here is I've got some notes that I took down, um, some bullet points that I'm going to talk about. But I also asked both of my sons to come in here. And I showed them what I had on the bikes. And then I asked them for any other inputs that they had about them. And so uh, I'm going to tell you what some of those what some of those inputs are as well. So it's not just what I had to say. I did seek feedback from the boys. So we ended up having two of these bikes at the same time. We bought one. It was like a 2008 ish. And then we ended up with, I don't know, like a 2015 or something like a one that was newer. I bought them both used. Um, and those bikes hold their value really well. 
Uh, so they, they drop down to a certain amount and then they kind of hold their valley really well in my area in Utah. Uh, and they're really, really great starter bikes for kids. Super great. They don't have a clutch. Uh, so the kids can just get on them. It's like a more of a, I don't know what the technical word of that bike of, of that clutch is. I want to say centripetal, but I, and maybe that is the word. Um, but it, uh, you just, the ga- the kids just hit the gas and go. Um, you've got neutral. Did it have neutral? Yeah, I think it had neutral and then three gears. And I think they were all up. And so first gear is pretty slow. Um, and then you shift up to second gear. Second gear was kind of money because you could, the kids could just leave it in second gear. I can't tell you how many times um, all three of my kids would just put the bike in second gear because it, they could stop. They could come to a complete stop in second gear and it had plenty of power to pull them through and to start going in second gear and it had a little bit more speed. And so that was kind of like their money gear. And then every once in a while, they would get it into third gear. There's not a ton of power on those bikes and they are quite heavy. Um, but second gear was really great. They don't have super great brakes. They don't have super great uh, front or rear brake, but it's serviceable. It's totally serviceable. And that was a really, really great bike for the kids. Um, had plenty of you know torque for getting up hills, and it gave the boys and my daughter at the time um, a lot of confidence. Some downsides to those little Honda bikes. Well, first off, the upside is they'll go forever. It's a little air-cooled four-stroke motor, and it'll go forever. They're quiet and low maintenance um, and bulletproof. So the nice thing is kids can use them. They can abuse them. You put a little bit of you know gas in the thing and it goes forever. If you change your oil once every year, <laughs> I mean, don't quote me on that. But like I know people that have had these bikes for many, many, many years and never changed the oil. They make it almost impossible for you to clean the air filter on that bike and it almost doesn't even matter. Um, and so that's a really, really bulletproof bike. Downsides are, though, that it's pretty heavy. And one thing that I really started to notice, because I would do a lot of trail riding with the boys, and I would watch them. I'd be riding behind them. And they would get to the point where they, they got to the point where they started riding faster than the suspension, the stock suspension could react. And what, I, what would happen is I would be behind them, and I would actually see them crash because of how the but they would come in, they would be going along and they'd hit some sort of a rock or a bump and the suspension couldn't absorb it and it would swap them out and boom, they would high side and crash. And I saw them crash uh, several times when I'm riding right behind them and I'm going, dang, um, we're going to, they're out riding this bike. So most, you know, adults like you and I, I'm, I'm not out riding my bikes. Like if, if the bike, if I crash, you know, because I swap out or something, I'm not going to sit here and say it's because I'm out riding the bike. It's just my, it's my mistake. And okay, so maybe I didn't use the right body position or maybe I didn't, you know, have the suspension set up exactly how it was supposed to be, but I'm not going to say that I out rode the bike. I'm saying that these kids were, they were out riding the bike and yeah, you could probably do some stuff with suspension on that Honda, which would make it better, which I'll come back to later on a different model. But at that point, um, I realize it's probably good for me to start looking for something with a little bit more capable suspension for the boys and something a little bit bigger, a little bit taller. Um, and that will lead into the next bike that I, that I got. But on those, on the, the note there on the Honda CRF 50, and if I'm um, ambitious enough, I'll record this when I am recording this video for YouTube, possible YouTube upload. This will just go out on podcast land right away. But if I can get the motivation to put this into a YouTube video, then hopefully I'll throw up some pictures of the boys actually riding these bikes, the different bikes. Um, but yeah, the boys loved them. The boys loved the Honda Sierra fifties. I asked them like, Hey, did you guys like them? And it was some of their favorite times riding. They were just getting into everything and they really, really enjoyed it. And they have fond memories of the Hondas and, and I do too. It's just, it's one of those things that I, I really enjoyed that stage. The C- Honda Sierra 50 stage, fun little bulletproof bikes. And the boys had a ton of fun. It was kind of like the Genesis of how all of it got started. The next bikes that we went to were the KTM 50 SX bikes. And I ended up with two of these bikes as well. And the impetus for that, because you'll be saying, well, how come you're using a full on race bike uh, to go trail riding with your kids? Well, you could ask the same thing. Like, why do I have a full on race bike for me? Like the race bikes are where all the best suspension is and the best components are. And so in kids bikes, you can really, you really either go full race bikes, which are not usually the greatest for riding trails, or you can do like the, 
the full trail bikes, which end up being just really, really heavy and really, really slow. There's not really a middle ground for kids. And so I'm like, okay, we're going to go the more aggressive route with these KTM 50 SX bikes. They're two stroke bikes, so they're a lot louder and they're just a lot more finicky. We ended up with an older one, like a 2007 or 2008 KTM 50 SX. And then later we had a newer one. I can't remember exactly what year it was. It was probably like a 2017 50 or something like that. And you know, I, I, in some ways it was really good because the boys weren't crashing because of the suspen- uh, because of the suspension like they did on the Honda 50s. Um, and so they they liked that out in the faster stuff, but that little centripetal clutch inside of that inside of those little 50 KTM 52 strokes, it's essentially like a mini snowmobile clutch. And yeah, you can adjust that and you can put different springs in them. You can do different things with them, but you're, you're totally tuning that clutch to your son. And these, these little bikes work great for motocross tracks. The boys even did take them to a couple motocross tracks and they had a ton of fun. But when you're out riding trails, it wasn't great. And the thing that was because that little, that little centripetal clutch sucks all the power out of that motor. It wastes a lot of the power. And the boys had to learn to ride really, really aggressive. And so in some ways, it kind of set them forward because they were going faster out in the more open terrain, and they were really liking that. On the flip side, the flip side of that coin was when we were doing trail rides, and if the trail rides were more technical, the bikes were overheating, and they were getting really frustrated and really humbled because we would go back. We would like say we have some camping area or something out in the desert where they had ridden their 50s there you know, a couple months before and made it up some hill. And now they've got their brand new awesome, you know, one of them was new, one of them wasn't, but they, now they've got their new race bikes that look so cool and everything. And now they can't get up that same hill because it doesn't have the low end power and they can't just go slow. See with the Honda 50, uh, 54 stroke, you could go, you know, and just put up the hill on the KTM 52 stroke. You had to be, you had to be on the pipe, man. You had to be wrapped out. So they were searching for traction, struggling for traction, washing the rear end out, washing the front end out and being completely humbled. And it was a frustrating, it was a frustrating point for them on some of the rides that we went on and I did. I saw it with both the boys. It seemed like they kind of digressed a little bit with those bikes it, uh, for the first little bit of time. It wasn't like a total digression the entire time, but it was a digression for a certain period of time. And so it was a tricky. It was a tricky thing. Like I said, the boys had to learn to ride aggressive. They had to learn how to ride faster. And so, so there are some definite things that that benefited them. And they uh, they eventually overcame that. And I think that they became, you know, better riders in a, in a way because of that. They loved the more the faster. They loved the way the bikes looked. Um, they loved that it was two stroke, kind of like dad's, because dad had a lot of two stroke. But it forced them to push faster than they were comfortable in a lot of places. There was good and bad with that. Um, and and I, looking back, I probably would skip that. I'll come, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to move into what I would skip to in just a second. Um, and I would probably wouldn't do, for what I'm doing, the trail riding stuff, I probably wouldn't do the KTM 50s again um, if, I, if I had to do it all over. I asked the boys what they said. And they said, hey, we liked them but they weren't the best. That was the, that was the exact thing that the boys said right here when I had them in, in the room here earlier today. They said, we liked the KTM 50s, but they weren't the best. So here's the next bike that we had. And I had all these bikes that like some of them overlapped and everything because I've got to remember, I've got a daughter who's older than these boys. A bike that we had at the same time was a Honda CRF 110F. So I'm not this this whole thing isn't like totally chronological because a lot of these bikes overlapped each other. In fact, we probably had a time where we had a KTM 50, a Honda CRF 110F and a and a K and the KTM 65 SX all at the same time. And then you go to another point of our of our career and we would have had the Honda 125 CRF 125F, a KTM 65 and the 
um, YZ65 and the KTM 85 SX. So like all this, the, uh, there's a lot of overlap in here. I'm just trying to talk about the things that I learned with those bikes. Chronologically, these are the ones that I bought, but we had they all overlapped each other. So the next one I want to talk about is the Honda CRF 110F. So this is the next step up in the Honda lineup in their Honda trail bike lineup. They used to have the Honda CRF 70F, but the, the 70 and the 110 were essentially the same thing. It's just that the 110 had a bigger motor. Um, the, the one, the CRF 70 F, as far as I know, didn't even really weigh any less. It was just, un, it was just less power on it. So there wasn't really a whole lot of reason for Honda to have that one. And so they dropped that from their lineup. We bought a used, lightly used CRF 110 F. I can't remember what year it was, 2015, 2016, somewhere in there. I could be wrong. Maybe it was 20. It might've been a 2013, probably was 2013. Anyway, I digress. Doesn't matter. The point is the CRF 110 F was much bigger than the fifties. It was basically like the CRF 50, but just bigger and heavier, more power. Um, it still didn't have a clutch. You didn't have to use a clutch, but you were still shifting the bike. You had, I think four gears on that. If my, if my memory serves correctly, I think it was four gears. It had really good torque for pulling hills. It was just bigger, had more power, but it suffered from the same things that the Honda suffered from, which is that it was <clears throat> it was really heavy and the suspension on that thing sucked. Uh, the brakes then became a little bit of an issue on that one because the bike is now even heavier and it just didn't really stop that well. It's it's an issue that I'll get into on a later bike, but that was one where I'm like, well, the brakes aren't the best, but the boys aren't going that fast and blah, blah, blah. And the issue, another issue with, with that is it just because it was heavy, it, it wasn't that much fun for the boys to ride. They had right with them, the KTM fifties, the KTM 50 SXs, and they liked those bikes. It was basically the same seat height. The KTMs were very narrow though, whereas the Honda is very wide. It's like you're riding a lawnmower. The CRF 110F is literally a lawnmower engine in, a, it feels like that anyway, a lawnmower engine inside of a dirt bike frame. So super heavy, but the weight is down low to the ground. It was hard for the boys or my daughter to pick it up when they were younger. If they tipped it over, it was very hard for them to pick it up. And that's another thing to think about is these big, heavy trail bikes. When they pin the kids underneath them, it's not a matter of if they pin them underneath. It's when they do. You got to make sure that you, they've got really good gear, really good boots. It's very, very, very important to have your kids in, in some decent riding boots because these bikes will tip on them. Eventually they'll get, you know, and it's much better to have the bike tip, you know, the, the levers, I mean, the pegs tipped onto your boot than it is onto your shoe and into your shin and your leg. So, um, that was the problem with the one twenty F or the one ten F it really, re that bike really only worked well for my daughter who was less aggressive, um, and she was less into it and she would just ride it when we went camping. The boys never really liked riding the 110 and they couldn't even remember riding it. I made them ride it around camp somewhat, but they would never really take it on a trail ride. And at that point, I wasn't forcing them to do something that they didn't want because it was all about having fun. It still was all about having fun, but as they've gotten a little bit older, I forced them into doing a couple things for me that they maybe didn't want to do. The 110, I didn't really force them to ride it much, but they didn't have a ton of fun doing it. Um, and if, if I did this, if I was to do this whole thing again, this is what I would do. I would have gone from the Honda and instead the Honda CRF 50 F and instead of going to the KTM 50 SXs, I would have moved actually up to this uh, Honda CRF 110 F and I would have sent the suspension off and had the suspension reworked. Yes, I know the bike would still be heavy, but I just think looking back because those bikes, this Honda CRF 110 Fs, it's super reliable, air cooled motor. The major downfall that those Hondas that we had was they were really just the boys were out riding the, sus the suspension. You could do this. You could do a similar thing with a Yamaha TTR 110. Um, and I think if I had to do it over again, I would do that. I would skip the KTM 52 strokes. I would go straight to a Honda or the, or the Yamaha 110, and I would have the suspension upgraded so that it actually worked a lot better, was able to react to the faster terrain and the, and you know, the faster hits, the bigger hits. That's probably what I would do if I was doing this all over again. So I haven't really regretted any of the bikes that we've bought, but if there's one that I liked the very least, it was those KTM 50 SXs for what we were doing. 
It was so, so nice, such a breath of fresh air to move to the next bikes that we got because this is when we finally started to get into what I feel were, quote, real dirt bikes. And that was the next bike in the lineup was the KTM 65 SX. So, and again, this is a full-on motocross race bike, but it is awesome. At this point, it's the first clutch bike that any of the kids have ever had, okay? And Connor, my, my, who's 12 now, I can't even remember exactly how old he was when we got him into this, but he started riding on the 65. I thought for some reason that it was going to take forever for them to learn the clutch. I was prepared that it was going to be such a frustrating experience for him and for me, and I was really, really worried about it. And I just basically started the boys or started Connor in the backyard on the grass. And I kind of got behind him and showed him how to do it. Like, Hey, we're both going to hand, we're both going to have our hands on the controls on the throttle. You can see what I'm doing with the throttle and feel what I'm doing with the throttle and with the clutch. And I kind of just got behind him and showed him three or four times. And then I'm like, Hey, you try it. And the interesting thing about those KTM 65s is they have enough low end torque that the, if they, if they weren't, as long as they weren't on oil or asphalt, they could pretty much like just bring the bike just a little bit over idle and then boom, dump the clutch and the bike had enough torque and power to just go and go off. And they learned so fast how to clutch and how to shift. And that's where I really, really feel like they both of my boys really got into their riding careers and it's been much, much more exciting since we got those K since that first KTM 65. So Connor, who's the older one, the older boy, um, he and Kaylee, my daughter has never ridden the KTM 65s or the other race bikes that we have. I'll get into her in just a minute. Um, but, uh, it wasn't as hard for them to learn the clutch as I thought it was going to be. And so that was really, really fun. And they, and then they have to start thinking about downshifting, upshifting, you know, feathering a little bit of clutch to get some power and those types of things and coming to a stop. And it's been really rewarding. And, um, it was fun to see them on a miniature version of the same thing that I'm riding. And you got to see, you know, some of the things, some of the gears started to click in their head where it's like, oh, this is what dad's doing. And oh, and they would get so much confidence now. And it wasn't easy. Like none of this has been really easy. There have been tears and there have been crying and there's been pain all along the entire way, you know, and you pick them up, you dust them off and, and you encourage them and you keep going. Um, with that KTM 65 SX it, and we still run it. We did a top end on it this summer ish. The bike now has a hundred hours on it. Um, both boys have, have ridden it at various times. Um, and it, they have crazy good brakes. They have crazy good suspension. It's a hydraulic clutch. It's a really, really fun bike to ride. And I think that these 65s, I swear they have twice the power of the KTM 50 SX because that KTM 50 had that centripetal clutch that was just sucked all the power and these 65s it'll wheelie with me on it it'll t it'll tear me up a lot of hills if I can get ahead of steam on it and get the bike in you know on the pipe it's so much more capable than the than the KTM 50 SXs it's just they're awesome the little 65s are awesome we're still running one right now so much more capable and suddenly they could do more of the technical stuff and they could go faster than before and this was a big breakthrough because on the on the um the K the KTM 50 SX it was really hard for them to do the technical stuff. They move up to the KTM 65 and it became easier to do the technical stuff because it had more power, more to more torque. They didn't have to go as fast. They could lug it a little bit through some of these things, especially, you know, with their smaller bodies and it could they could actually do it. And so that was really really cool and it still continued to be cool. The KTM because we also got a YZ65, which I'll talk about next. The KTM was just, it had more lugability factor, better bottom end. And both of my boys learned more stuff on that KTM 65 than I feel like they had learned on the other bikes. And they learned things on that bike that'll translate to their riding throughout the entire rest of their riding career. You know, so that's a really, really cool thing. Again, the KTM has more low end than the YZ65. And I, I didn't know that at the time. In fact, when we did the review of the two bikes, the KTM 65 and the Yamaha 65, I didn't know even as much as I know now, not nearly as much about how much of a discrepancy there is between the low end of the KTM and the low end of the Yamaha. One of the other great things about the KTM 65 was that you could actually get a kickstand for it because I hate not having a kickstand. Um, and we got, we were able to get a fast way 
uh, kickstand for the KTM. We could never find that for the Yamaha. The KTM is shorter and narrower than the Yamaha. Um, and so it's easier for a kid with short legs to get on, on the KTM. Um, Case, he's the one that is still on the KTM 65. He says that it's super fun to ride. It's his favorite bike so far. He's still he's 10 right now, and he's just kind of on the bubble. He's not quite tall enough to move up to an 85. I'll get to that later. Um, but he can't he can ride the 85, but he loves his 65. And he does he likes to do some technical stuff with it. He'll he's kind of like the kid that um, will find interesting lines to go putting up a hill and kind of work his way through things. Uh, and the KTM 65 allows him to do that. And it's super fun. Um, Connor, my older son said that the KTM 65 was his favorite bike up to that point. But then the two subsequent bikes that he's been on after that have been his favorite bike. So overall, the KTM 65 is not Connor's favorite bike, but it is my, you know, my younger son Case's favorite. Let's move to the Yamaha 65. So this is also a two stroke. Um, I realized that because in my head, I thought, you know, just doing it mathematically, like thinking, oh, look, I'll be able to have a 65 and an 85 at the same time. Well, I do have that now. But in the beginning, it's like I had to have both boys on 65s for a while. And instead of getting a... Um, another KTM, we went and looked at the Kawasaki 65, the KX 65. My son didn't like that. It was much taller and just wider and it was significantly heavier. And so we were going to get that Kawasaki, but he was like, no, he went, we went and sat on the uh, Yamaha and he liked that a lot better. And so we ended up with the Yamaha. The Yamaha YZ 65 is a little bit taller than the KTM. It's a little bit wider and taller than the KTM. It's only about one inch as far as taller but it really makes the bike feel about two inches taller when they're riding it. And I know that because I've had my boys go back to back to back to back many, many times on those bikes. And it was always the, you know, my taller son, my older son that ended up feeling more comfortable on the Yamaha than the younger one. Um, cause it is taller. So if you've got a tall kid, you know, the Yamaha might be a better, it might be a better bet. It wasn't a whole lot cheaper than the KTM. It was only, I think it was only a couple hundred bucks cheaper. And we got both the, that KTM 65 and the Yamaha 65 new. So I thought the, K the Yamaha was going to be significantly cheaper, but it wasn't significantly cheaper. Something inter else interesting about the Yamaha is it has a cable clutch, a steel braided cable clutch like a lot of dirt bikes have had over the years. And I thought it was going to be, it was very easy to pull in the beginning. And I thought it was going to be, it was going to end up becoming harder to pull as the cable kind of degraded over time, but it hasn't. One second. Sorry, I had to get a drink there. The Yamaha 65, um, YZ, YZ 65, that clutch has always been easier to pull than the KTM. And it continues even to this day where we've had the bikes for a few years. The Yamaha clutch is easier to pull even now. And yes, I keep the bikes clean. I keep them maintained, but I haven't even put any lube down that Yamaha YZ 65's um, clutch cable. Haven't put any lube down that and it's still amazing it's still really easy to pull. And so that's been a, you know, a lot of that probably has to do with how heavy the springs are that they have inside of that thing, but it's been very easy for the boys to ride and they've actually really liked the clutch. The clutch is a little easier on the Yamaha than the, than the KTM to pull. Here's where the problem is though. It has significantly less bottom end for, um, as compared to the KTM. And this became an issue more and more. The longer we rode it, we ended up doing a top end on the thing and it got a little bit better, but it just, we would be doing hill climbs and the thing would just, it just wouldn't pull my son up the hill. We'd be doing technical stuff and suddenly my older son was frustratingly getting passed by his little brother because the little brother was on the KTM, which would just motor up these hills and it just did better. The Yamaha only has a single radiator and I think that contributes partly to one of the reasons why it heats up faster. Like the Yamaha was always not always, but it was often overheating on us when we were doing technical riding and stuff like that. We had to just baby that bike a little bit more. And there were times that it really, really kind of got into my son's head because suddenly his little brother looked like he was better than him. And so much of that had to do with the bike over this, you know, this year that we've had it. And so the longer I love the bike because it was easier to work on, there was more room inside the Yamaha. And so like when we put electron carburetors on both bikes on the KTM and the, and the Yamaha, 
um, because I was tired of like having to try to tune with jetting as we were going from the desert to the mountains and we fouled a couple plugs and stuff. And so I put electron carburetors on both bikes at the same time. And it was actually significantly easier to get the electron on the Yamaha than it was on the KTM I had to tune both of them. Uh, and I found out that electrons, you know, I was only putting electrons on the big bikes and I felt like they were bang on basically all the time. But on the little bikes, I've now put electrons on three different quote little bikes and I've had to tune every one of them, you know, significantly. But once you get them kind of dialed in, then they work pretty well. Um, so I really liked the Yamaha for the how easy it was to work on because it was more open. Um, but my son. Oh, and the other thing I loved about it is I love the way the Yamaha sounded. Like it sounded awesome. It sounds awesome on the pipe. Um, but if the limitation, because of the limitations on the low end, if I was doing it all over again, I probably would skip the Yamaha, unfortunately, just because of the way that we ride and the trails that we go on. It just has kind of been a hindrance. And I've, I've noticed a couple of times where it really kind of, you know, my son, my older son was bummed out because he just, he wasn't on as capable of a bike in some of these situations. If you're just ripping out through the desert or maybe even on some motocross track, maybe it wouldn't matter, but I, I kind of feel like it, it probably would matter um, with that, with that less of low end. However, all of those things set aside, I asked Connor if he still like, cause over time he started to tell me that he liked the Yamaha better, the Yamaha 65 better than the KTM 65. And I asked him if that was still the case today. And he said, yeah, he, despite notwithstanding the fact that he had the lower, the, you know, the worst low end, softer low end on the bike, he still said that it was his favorite bike and he ended up liking it overall better than the KTM. I asked Case, who's, who mostly spends his time on the KTM. I asked him, you know, if, um, what he didn't like about it. And he just kind of parroted what I'd said. He said he didn't like how it was harder for him to go slow on the bike. And so. Anyway, the boys are split right there. One of them liked the KTM, one of them liked the Yamaha. Let's move into uh, the next bike that I bought, which I, and again, I have, I still have the KTM 65, the Yamaha 65, and the Honda, and the next bike down on the list. I have four kids' bikes right now. I need to get rid of one of them. But we ended up getting the Honda CRF 125F, I bought uh, 125F. So it's kind of cool because I had the Honda 50, the Honda 110, and now the Honda 125. Um, in the F models. So I've had all those and I still have the one, the uh, 125. We bought the, I believe it's the 2019 edition, which is the first year they went to EFI on that bike. Before that, it was a carburetor bike. I've loved that little bike. It's been great because I didn't have to spend time jetting it. It's kind of a breath of fresh air because on every other bike that I've ever had to buy, I've had to spend time setting up, setting it up and tuning it. You know, even if it's just, you know, the bikes that I've got out in the shop for me to ride, I end up setting those bikes up significantly, putting tires on them, putting tubeless on them. You know, maybe it's hand guards, maybe it's different protection parts. I have a whole string of things that I go through on a lot of my bikes. But on this Honda, I knew we weren't going to be doing anything crazy with it. It was just going to be a bike that we would ride around camp, maybe a little bit around the neighborhood. Um, my daughter primarily would be the one that would ride it. I bought it for her, took her down and bought her a new bike because the boys had had all these different bikes. I'm like, hey, honey, I love you. I want you to be able to do this. So we go down there and we get this uh, 2019 Honda Sierra F 125F. Um, it's a great bike for my daughter. It does have a clutch. It's also a great bike for my wife. Um, and so this is where my daughter had to start learning how to use a clutch. It's a it's a you know traditional steel braided uh, clutch cable. One problem with that is it basically the clutch, all the engagement is out at the end of the lever. And it makes it hard for my daughter to be able to kind of do it because she's letting out she's letting out the clutch slowly, 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 slowly. And then she gets kind of the end of where her fingers don't go anymore. And that's where the bike wants to engage. That's where the clutch engages and disengages is out there at the end of the pole. I could probably adjust that out. Um, but that's been a little bit of a frustration for my daughter. But it does have a quite a bit of torque. You know, I think it's only a four speed. It's not super fast. Um, but, you know, for my wife and my daughter putting around camp and stuff like that, it's actually a pretty, it's a pretty good deal. Um, it's pretty heavy for what it is. I say that because my 15 year old daughter, we were out camping earlier this year, and this is technically when she was still 14, but she was almost 15 and she was kind of riding it around camp and she dropped, she tipped it over kind of in a little bit of a, just a tiny little bit of a goalie, just a low spot. 
she could not pick that thing up. She just couldn't do it. You know, she's not the biggest girl. I mean, there's a lot of 15 year old girls that could just, you know, bench press the sucker. Maybe. Well, probably not a lot that could bench press it, but there's a lot of 15 year old girls, 14, 15 year old girls that could lift it up. My daughter couldn't lift it up, but then her much more experienced and like, you know, tank of her little brother, her 10 year old brother ran down there, picked the bike up, started it and brought it back. But the, I, I share that story with you because it is really heavy. The 125 FCRF 125 is very heavy. I don't have the specs right in front of me, um, but it's a heavy bike for kids to pick up. Um, yeah, I, I wrote down that it's a clutch bike with four speeds. I have that. It's pretty slow to accelerate. It's not going to rip your arms off at all. It's not a fast bike. And I don't mind that part as much. I've ridden it in a, a significant amount in, in various situations because it's big enough that I, you can, as a full grown man, you can actually sit on a fun pit bike. You know, it's, it's a fun bike to take. In fact, I use the bike mostly to like drive around the neighborhood with my young little two, two year old or three year old. We get on, she calls it the red bike. We go get out on the red bike and we'll go tool around the neighborhood. And, and uh, especially in the summer, in the warm, warm summer nights, we would go around and do that. I don't mind the fact that it has, you know, trail suspension. I don't mind the fact that it that it has, um, you know, not much get up and go. It does have some good torque. Like it'll pull me up a lot of hills. Um, here's the problem: the brakes absolutely suck. It's got drum brakes in the back. Um, it is it is a disc brake in the front, but they are not good. They're the worst brakes that I've had on any of the bikes that I've personally purchased because now you're getting into a bike that actually weighs, you know, a significant amount. And then you're going along anywhere from 10 to 40, well, 35, 40 miles an hour. And now the thing won't stop. It's like you're grabbing it. I'm used to being able to use one finger and basically go into a stoppy or lock the front wheel back wheel up at any moment on all of these other bikes at least the bigger ones and, and the race bikes that my sons have had. But this KTM or the, I mean, this Honda CRF 125 F it's crappy brakes. Like I have to use three fingers on that front brake to get it to really do anything. Obviously, um, it's just not what Honda really was worried about. You know, they didn't put a great working brake front or rear on that bike. And it's probably the worst part about it. As far as suspension goes, it is the best suspended Honda that I've had so far. Yes, it's still a trail suspension. No, it's not for going fast, hitting whoops, hitting jumps or anything like that. But I do think it's the best um, suspension on the Honda trail bikes that we've had thus far. Um, the boys, both of the boys can ride it around camp, but they don't like riding on the trails. And I have forced them to do that. So I forced the boys to flip flop a bunch on the 265s that we've had that we still have. I forced them to like, hey, you guys are going to swap and, and do some testing for me. I forced them to do that. I've also forced them to ride the CRF one or the Honda CRF 125F and they don't like it. We've made them ride out on trail rides and man, they hate that because then one of them is on a ripping two stroke and the other one is on this heavy, slow four stroke, and they just don't like it. Some of the things that they said when I asked them is they said it felt big. It felt slow. It felt heavy to them. Connor said he just didn't feel confident when riding the bike, and he said it seemed like the tires would just slide off the trail. Now, they are the stock tires that I got on that Honda, so yeah, you could change the tires on that and maybe put a, more of a knobby tire on there, and it might be better, but neither one of them liked it. Neither one of them liked riding that bike. They prefer riding any of the other bikes that we've got. Um, I will hang on to that bike, though, for a long time. The Honda 125F is a bike that I'll hang on to for a long time, maybe longer than any of the other ones, because simply there's no reason for me to upgrade it because Honda's not changing that bike from year to year. And it's a low maintenance bike that my wife can ride, my daughter can ride, and they can have it for years to come. I don't have to worry about jetting. The things are bulletproof, and so I'll probably have that bike for a longer period of time than just about anything else here probably over the, over the, the long haul. And now let, moving into the last bike in the list that we have uh, currently. Um, so even currently right now, we've got the KTM 65, the Yamaha 65, the Honda CRF 125F and the KTM 85 SX. I'm going to be looking to move the Yamaha YZ 65 here soon. If you guys are listening to this and you live in Utah, I haven't, I haven't even posted the bike up yet. Um, but I will be selling that bike here soon. So if you're interested in that, uh, contact me. It's Kyle at dirtbikechannel.com. Anyway, 
um, this KTM 85 SX. I was really, really nervous about moving up to this because I know that the bikes were a little bit, uh, quite a bit taller and they make two versions of the KTM 85. They make the big wheel and the small wheel. Um, the small wheel version is the one that I bought. It has a 17 inch front wheel and a 14 inch rear wheel. The night, the, the large version, the big wheel version is a 19 up front and a 17 in the rear, I believe. Um, and those are the only differences between those bikes is the wheel sets that come on them. So that's kind of the nice thing is we bought the small wheel version of the bike and I'll probably end up with two of these bikes based on what I'm seeing right now. I mean, I could do the YZ 85, uh, but the little bit about, I know about them and kind of the, I just feel like I'm going to, I'd rather put the boys on these KTMs right now from what I can see, but maybe we'll have a, you know, we'll get a, you know, a KX 100 down the road too, or possibly even a YZ 85 down the road. But these, you know, the cool thing about these as a dad, I'm really starting to see also the benefit in just having to stock one type, one part. So this entire time when I've had the KTM and the Yamaha, I've had to have two different spark plugs. I've had to have different style, um, levers for if we break levers and, and just all these different things. I'm working with so many different things right now. It's nice to be able to like narrow it down. And so I think I'm actually just going to have two of the KTM 85s once I can get my younger son up to that. And maybe probably one of them will be the small wheel version. And one of them will then be the big wheel version. And we can swap them out just by changing our wheel sets. So that'll be really, really nice. This is the first like really, really, really real dirt bike that I've had my kids on. And it's super fun even for me to ride. It's big enough that I can really ride it. Um, I was tuning because I decided to put Electron on the bike and I needed to tune the bike because as soon as I threw the Electron on the bike, it wasn't. And that was tight too. The Electron's super tight, even like on the KTM 85. It's tight in a different place, um, but it was tight to get it on. And it was it still ran really, really rich after we put the, the Electron on. And so then I spent couple hours tuning the thing, like, you know, pulling out my needle or the metering rod, adjusting the metering rod, putting it back in. And I would go get the bike hot and ride it. And I was really riding it to the point. I'm like, dude, I got to put on my boots and my helmet to do this because I'm pushing it now hard enough. I can actually hurt myself. And so that was really cool because here I am setting up this bike and, and trying to get it tuned in this KTM 85 SX. And I'm like, this sucker is awesome. I'm so excited about the bike and I can get a lot more parts for this KTM 85 than any of the other bikes that I've had. Like already I've put on full wrap hand guards on the bike so that I don't have to deal with so many broken levers. We haven't had a ton of broken levers, but I probably won't have to deal with any broken levers with the full wrap hand guards. And they're the full wrap, full size full wrap hand guards, the same type of hand guards that I put on my KTM 300 XCW. So that's really cool. You know, so those parts interchange between the KTM 85 and my big bike. That part actually can interchange, which is pretty cool. Um, handlebars on them are just, I think, just a little bit narrower on these little 85s than they are on the full size KTMs, but. So I got full wrap hand guards on there. I got a super great skid plate from SXS, the best skid plates that you can that you can get out there. Um, I got a kickstand from Fastway. It's been really, really fun to kind of put that thing together. I've put more work into setting that bike up than any of the other kids bikes that I've ever done because, hey, I'm like looking at this thing and I'm like, I got to set the sag for this bike. Look at this thing. I got to get some sag because my son doesn't quite weigh enough. I probably don't have the right spring. I probably should go because I've got the sag set about about correctly, but we don't. Anyway, the point is I've got race sag about where it needs to be, but I don't have static sag where it needs to be. Um, so I think I need a different spring, but we I've been doing some setup on that bike and it's been really, really fun. And it's really cool to kind of just see um, them progress. And now, you know, Connor, who's 12, he, I didn't know if he was going to want to ride this bike very much because it was going to be taller. But by the time we got the small wheel version of it and we got the sag set down, then he's comfortable enough to go ride it. And after the first ride, I said, Hey, are you ready for me to sell the YZ 65? And he said, I think so. And then after the second ride, he's like, absolutely. You can totally sell the Yamaha YZ 85. I'm not going to ride that again. And it's been giving him a lot of confidence. Um, crazy good brakes on that bike, crazy good suspension. Um, and Connor, he, you know, my 12 year old, he's kind of, he's always careful and he's always timid when he's got a new bike and he's been on all the bikes. He has ridden every single bike that I've talked about on this list. He's put the most time on them. Um, and he's very, very timid when he's, you know, getting used to a bike. And although the height of this 85 SX was a little bit intimidating to him at first, um, I've seen him gain a ton of confidence on the bike already. And he's got, what is it? 
six and a half ish maybe seven probably seven maybe in a little bit more than seven hours because we went for a ride just maybe yesterday and the bigger wheels and the bigger frame means the bike stays more settled like i'll tell you a story about just quickly i was following my son yesterday you know on this 85 we're going back home and i'm just right on his tail kind of on this little single track trail going out through the sagebrush and i watched his he skirted around a rock with his front wheel, but his back wheel went boom and, and bounced over that rock and it kicked the bike out to the side a little bit. And it was so fun to watch the bike just recover because it's so capable with the suspension and it's just a bigger bike, more, more energy, bigger tires, and it's just like, boom, just came right back in line, just like you know happens with our bikes. And that was really, really fun to see. And I even talked to him through the headset and I was like, hey, did you feel that? Did you feel the bike kick out to the side? And then because of your body position and because of the capability of the biking, the capability of you, you were able to ride right through that. That was really cool. Good job. And that was the bigger the bikes get, the more I get to see those things happening. In the open, in the open terrain, Connor now is faster than ever for sure. And that's awesome. In the slower terrain, he's, he's probably he's kind of on par just trying to just trying to maintain that. So he, he hasn't gained yet in the technical terrain, but he's certainly gained more in the faster terrain. Uh, there was another thing uh, last week we went out to a jump we were kind of at the end of a ride a trail ride that we did out in the desert and we we there was this jump it's like this big step up jump and it was actually quite big it was intimidating to hit it the first couple of times the only reason it wasn't intimidating is it's a step up so you don't have a gap to do and six months before when he was there on his yz yz 65 he didn't even dare hit the jump on this KTM 85 with the bigger wheels, he started hitting it and hitting it and landing on the uphill and then landing on the, on the uphill. 20 minutes later, the kid is clearing it. I was so impressed with him. I posted some of those uh, a video of it on Instagram, you know, and it was uh, the, the point was, you know, he, he was jumping and he was landing on the uphill and he was getting his front wheel over it, but not the back wheel, you know, three, four feet away. And I said, I'm like, Connor, I, I'll tell you this. I know the bike can do it. The bike you're riding can do that. And he's like, yeah, I know the bike could do it. I'm just not sure I could. And then next thing I know, he's, he starts clearing the thing. And so it was awesome. It was super fun. And he was beaming. He was just absolutely beaming. And he was so happy. And it made me kind of happy as a dad to kind of see that. So at this point, um, Connor says that it is, it is his favorite bike of all time. He just loves that KTM 85 so far. And he, I said, so what do you like about it? And he said, well, I like the extra power, Dad. Um, and, I, and he said he likes the size because he's not cramped. He doesn't feel like he's kind of like cramped in on that bike. And he loves how it can jump. He said that specifically. He loves how it can jump. Case, my 10-year-old, has only ridden it once for maybe 10 minutes. And he said he liked it. He was excited about that. But it's a little bit too tall for him right now. And so he doesn't want to ride it a ton. But he did say that he liked the power of the bike. So those boys are... are uh, my riding buddies for the next however many decades and it's fun to watch them ride and those are the bikes that we've had so that was the saga started out with uh we had an elect uh, little electric razor bike didn't like that ended up with a couple crf two fit or crf 50 f's we had two ktm 65 sx's those were my least favorite bikes um, we ended up with a honda crf 110 f a ktm 65 sx a yamaha yz 65 a Honda CRF 125F, and now finally we've got the KTM 85SX. Those are the bikes that we've got and that we've had, and it's been a fun. It's it's been a saga, man, going through it. Lots of work, but it's rewarding. It's just like anything else in life. Hey, if you guys want to support Dirtbike Channel, one of the best ways to do that is to use my links to Rocky Mountain ATV or Motorsport or Amazon. You can find those links up in the upper right-hand corner of my website. You go to dirtbikechannel.com up in the upper right-hand corner. You'll see that links section up there. You can also get in with my Dirtbike Channel sweepstakes right now. If you're listening to this video or this podcast or watching it on YouTube before December 15th of this year, you can go to my website, dirtbikechannel.com, and you can get entered to win one of the three different dirt bikes that I'm giving away. I've got hats. I've got shirts. I've got hoodies. I've got gear. I have a bunch of different stuff. I've got hopefully some tie downs still, and I've got different parts that you can put on your bikes. So go over there and get entered to win those three bikes by picking yourself up some gear that way. Okay. If you have any questions, you can hit me up. Uh, Kyle at dirtbikechannel.com. That's the best way to get a hold of me on email. And until next time, leave a single track. Thanks, everybody.